Vegas Video Network Studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's Top of the Food Chain. And now your host, he's one part mohawk, two parts attitude, and a touch of what the f***, it's Al Mancini. Always so surprised by that. Hello, thank you. Welcome to Top of the Food Chain. I'm your host, Al Mancini, the Kobe beef of the food writing world. And by that I mean I am rare, exotic, and pricey. I drink a lot of beer. I'm extra fatty. And I enjoy being massaged by Japanese women. And honestly, while my government has not yet banned my export, I firmly believe one day they will. So there you go. Thank you. Thank you. You are at Top of the Food Chain here on the Vegas Video Network. We are live. I know we're a couple minutes late, but uh, hopefully you stuck around and you are logged in and you are on the chat line because we're going to be talking about how to make sushi at home. As you can see, we've got some fun stuff in front of us. And we are also going to be talking about how you can eat incredible food at a good price, at a bargain price, and actually help the hungry here in Nevada. So we'll be talking about Restaurant Week with the founder of Restaurant Week, or at least the woman who is in charge of it, as far as I know. And we'll be doing that in just a few minutes, man. OK, cool. Well, I want to give people a quick refresher course. There's, there's seven terms that we said in our last show that people should really know when it comes to sake. And if you can understand what these words mean, you, you can read the basic label and kind of impress your friends. So you want to, can you mind running down them? Could we throw them up there, Scott? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, the seven words, the most important word is actually listed number three, ginjo. Uh, Ginjo actually refers to a premium level sake. So if you're looking and you're looking on a list and you want to buy a sake, the Ginjo is what you want to look for. Uh, Hanjozo and Junmais, every sake in the world falls into these two categories. It's either a Hanjozo or a Junmai. Uh, every premium sake, like every, a hot sake wouldn't, would it? Every sake. Really? Every single sake. Because all, all it refers to, Junmai means it's a pure rice sake. Mm -hmm. Jun is pure, Mai is rice. Hanjozo is a fortified sake. It's actually um, blended with a brewer's alcohol. So the Junmai sake is you have four ingredients. You have water, rice, yeast, and koji. With the Hanjozo sake, you have water, rice, yeast, and koji. And then you also have a uh, brewer's alcohol. It's a neutral spirit. Yeah. And they use it to balance the sake. It gives it a much more well-rounded uh, flavor to it. OK, now once you get um, past a ginjo, which is your, your premium, which right. means they've milled off at least 40% of the rice. I exactly. Believe. And the, then you get to the higher level, which would be the, the dai ginjo. The right? dai ginjo. Uh, dai is one of the words means big or uh, super. It's basically a big premium is what dai ginjo means. Uh, the dai ginjo refers to the polishing ratio, ratio of the rice. It uh, comes back to the semi-buai, how much of the rice is actually left over after they polish. Okay. So they polish away at least 50% to make dai ginjos. Okay. Uh, one of the daiginjos I brought you today is actually, it's a uh, Komotsoro. It's from Hiroshima. Hiroshima is known to have the softest water in, throughout Japan, Hiroshima and Niigata. Okay. Uh, this particular sake is known as the Emperor's Sake. It's not available in Japan. They do not sell it within Japan. It's only for the Emperor's consumption and for export to uh, the United States. Okay. So. so let's run through just the last two. Genshu, which I always Genshu, joke is my favorite because it's got more alcohol to it. Genshu is undiluted. <laughs> Uh, so it's not watered down. Every sake, once it's brewed, comes out around 20% in alcohol. And a lot of times they'll dilute it with water and bring it down to about 15 to 16%. Okay. And then a nigori, uh, nigori, yes. Nigori is an unfiltered or loosely filtered sake. It's a cloudy. So it's still particles of rice in there. It gives a nice little banana type flavors to it, a little bit on the sweeter side. And much more filling as well. Okay, so there's your crash course. You can go take the class, and he will tell you everything you need to know. You'll get little tastes of all of these. And I mean, just it's an amazing, fun course, and it's great for, you know, we can talk to you. I can talk to you all you want. You can watch me drink these sakis, and I'm going to have a good time with it. But to really taste the differences, go to a course where you have an expert. And you guys have more sake over there than anyone else in Las Vegas, if yeah. not the country, right? We actually have one of the largest premium sake lists. And when I say premium sake lists in the United States, uh, it's one of the largest lists. It is the largest list uh, west of the Mississippi. Um, well over 140 bottles on the list right now and constantly growing. Okay, we have a question from the chat room. Scott, what's happening? Yeah, Maya wants to know what the price is for the course you mentioned. Uh, it's $100 per person. Okay, um, so you brought me some sake. We're about to get me cutting up some stuff. Why don't you tell me, why don't you tell me what you're pouring for us? So well, I brought you two sakis. Uh, they're completely different. We have the Dewa Sakura Oka, which is, which is from Yamagata, which is a very cold mountain region in the Alps of Japan. Uh, this is 
a, a Ginjo level sake, and it's a straight Ginjo, so it refers to the Hanjozo, the Hanjozo level sakis, because it is fortified to blend it with a little bit of alcohol uh, to make it a much more well rounded sake. And who's drinking with me? I'll take a little. Okay. Kanpai. There you go, Kanpai. <laughs> wow, that's a very nice sake. It's just very well balanced. It's kind of great for beginners or educated sake drinkers. Okay. Um, and, and then you want to use maybe the wine glasses yeah. before the other one? That's okay. Can you hand me that bottle? And what are we looking at here for a second sake? So this is a Komatsuru, which is a Sokuko, which is actually, this is the emperor sake that I was referring to. This is only, it's not sold in Japan anywhere. It's only for export. And they make the rope a little bit hard to get off sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but this is considered the emperor's sake because the only people in Japan that can brew it is the imperial family and the emperor himself that can actually drink it. Oh, really? Wow. And then, and of course, then Americans can drink the it. The Americans. Right. Scott, another question while we're pouring this. Yeah, Jackie wants to know, how do you sign up for the class? What's the process? Uh, you can call the, the restaurant itself at 702-607-0700 or you can uh, make reservations online. Okay, so this is only for the emperor and Americans. Exactly. Okay, kanpai. Kanpai. <laughs> oh, my poor Japanese friends, you do not know what you're missing with this. This is good. It's fantastic. Is this why Japanese people come <laughs> to America, so they can drink this? Ah, that's a good question. Okay. But well, this is just amazing. Yeah, this is great. Thank you so much. We are now going to cut. Well, you're going to watch me make a little bit of sushi. i got to warn you. <laughs> now we'll move these over to here. Um, we're going to watch me make a little bit of sushi. i got to warn you. Don't wear giant rings like this when you're making sushi, okay? The, the rice is very sticky, and it will end up in your rings, and we cannot do that, so. Okay, now that I am totally without my jewels, Yuki, you're gonna be a little cooler with me this time because you just made me look like a fool last time, man. I'll try. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> so here we go. We've mm. got Yuki Aedo, um, master sushi chef. You trained in Japan or here in America? Uh, actually, I was trained in the States. Okay. I was in Japan for like maybe a year. So how hard is it to make sushi at home? Um, it's actually pretty simple. I mean, as long as you have the basic stuff, fish, seaweed, um, rice, I mean, or a rolling mat, you can actually do anything with it. I okay. mean, most people use, like, uh, plastic to wrap it around the, the mats to make the, for the rolls to be on the outside, right. uh, rice to be on the outside. Mm -hmm. And then today we're actually going to do um, with the seaweed outside, more traditional. More Which is harder, you tell me. Depending so I'm going to do worse, yeah. It's a very person. Last time you went, you kind of tra uh, trashed it. <laughs> My rolls were fine. It was the cutting of it that so, I thought was so bad. But yeah, yeah but you were drunk. I, you were drunk. Bad, and and yes, I'd been drinking. Yeah. But you can get these pretty much mm. anywhere. I mean, you get these yeah. in any store. I mean, I've seen them in, you know, whether you're Bed Bath & Beyond mean, or wherever you go. I mean, uh, maybe not there, but, you know, general Pottery Barney kind of places. I mean, right? Whole Foods like, sells it, I believe. Um, anywhere in Chinatown will sell it, especially in Vegas. Um, most of the stores will carry these. Okay. So, I mean, they're only like a dollar for like just the regular ones. Okay. So um, let's start with the rice okay. because a lot of people don't understand that rice in Japan is often considered the most important part of sushi. And I know a lot of Japanese chefs will train months, maybe years, just learning how to make rice before they're even allowed to get behind the board and cut, right? Yeah, that's true. And then um, rice in Japan, actually rice, you would actually pair something with rice. You know, rice is usually like the main thing. So, um, in like sushi rice, especially sushi rice, most of the time we actually use something called koshi hikari. It's uh, basically a really like premium type of rice. Yeah. So if I go into my supermarket, sometimes you will see things that say sh sushi rice. So that's okay. It's a, it's a shorter grain yeah. rice, yeah, right? Yeah, shorter grain rice. Shorter grain rice. And then how is it prepared? Because I know traditionally sushi rice has vinegar in it, right? Yeah, usually it's prepared with just vinegar, salt, and uh, sugar. That would be the main ingredients. Is there a recipe people you can give people for that, or would it be on the back of a sushi rice container? Um, if they come to class, we actually have, give out cards that actually have all the recipes and stuff on it. Um, shows them how to make our teriditos. Um, ceviches and stuff like that. Okay, and I'm sure if you go online, you can look up a basic sushi rice <laughs> recipe and find out how to do it. Okay, so we've got our rice. Now, mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. um, where do you go here in Las Vegas or in another town to get fish that is high enough quality to be used in sushi? Well, uh, I mean, if you, can, if you go to like Whole Foods or if you go to like um, some places in China how might carry certain kind of fish like snappers and stuff like that, but they'll actually come in like packages where you can actually use those. Um, salmon, for the most part, if you actually freeze it one time and let it thaw out, you can actually use it. 
be raw if you wanted to. You don't necessarily have to cook it. Okay. Yeah. And tuna, would that have to be just fresh? Yeah, tuna has to always be fresh. The litter gets actually has like this weird like tint, grayish tint to it. Okay. So where you can actually see it like decaying. So unless it's like bright red, you actually wouldn't want to like mess with it. Okay, so color and of course nothing yeah. should smell like fish ever. Exactly. That I mean, getting... it can be fishy, that's fine, but depending like um Say if you start using like yellowtail or tuna, it actually has a lot of histamines in it, which will actually cause you to you know, have a messed up stomach. Okay. So you got to be careful on which kind of fish you're actually using. So the safest ones to start with at home would be salmon, which yeah, can salmon, be frozen, and then fresh tuna. Yeah, salmon would be yeah, good. And then, uh, like I said, usually if you're going to get tuna, like a uh, sushi quality tuna, it actually comes in like a little package that actually you, you would right. be able to use. And if you go to a Whole Foods, it'll tell you if it's sushi grade yeah, exactly, or sushi quality. Exactly. Some place like that. Did we have another question, Scott? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just saw it come up something about uh, what's the ratio, sugar to vinegar? Uh, sugar to vinegar, I mean, if depending how you like it, you can actually do like two to one. Like um, you can do two vinegar to one sugar. So I mean, like I said, it depends how sweet you want it. Salt will probably be like a quarter of that. Um, you know. Okay. So like, you can experiment kind of basic, to taste yeah. at home as well. And so we also, of course, brought some basic condiments. What do we have cut up here? These are just some cucumbers? Uh, these are actually Japanese cucumbers. Um, this is kaiwate, like uh, Japanese daikon sprouts. Yeah, the daikon the sprouts, which yeah. look like little baby clovers, kind of, mm -hmm. to a degree. And you see there, <laughs> I always put things in the wrong direction, Scott. Mm -hmm. And then we'll move the bottle, because that makes it easier. Right. to see things. And then just some avocado, right? Very popular. Yeah, avocado. Um, right. Do people use avocado in Japan or is that Actually, in Japan, we don't actually use that much avocado. Yeah. That's actually, it's actually like the, uh, in the States, the whole avocado ca craze came about. Because Jap Japan, you would rarely ever see an avocado. Right, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little weird. like a very <clears throat> Japanese ingredient. Also, mm -hmm. the, the rolls <clears throat> that Americans are so crazy about. Mm -hmm. I mean, that seems to be something that was invented here in America, usually by, by yeah. Korean-owned sushi shops tend uh, to go nuts on them most of the time. I don't think no one actually knows who originally created the first roll, but, I mean, like, the reason why the rice is on the outside in the States um, is because it's more filling, mm -hmm. you know? In right. America, you like, like you know, big things right. for your buck, right? right. So, I mean, that's how it came about. Yeah, because when I was in Japan, and I was mm. only there for a few days, but I saw lots of nigiri sushi, which yeah. is, you know, your it's basic main. rice with the fish on top. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there was sashimi. But as for rolls, I really only saw basic one-fish rolls, like tuna mm -hmm. and rice inside of the seaweed, and that was it. Or yeah, maybe basically. salmon. And most people tended to take that as takeout. You didn't even see that being consumed a lot in I the mean, restaurants. Like in Japan, I mean, depending where you go, like, uh, like I said, the fish and the rice would, like, like the quality of everything would... Uh, decide the grade. Like you can actually go to like Seven Eleven, you know, you'll find sushi. You know, you'll find rolls. But right. obviously, it's going to taste totally different from when you actually go to like a, a good restaurant. You know. Right. right. Okay, so we've got our mat. We've got our oh, and nori, mm -hmm. of course, which yes. is seaweed paper. You definitely want to have your mm -hmm. nori, which you can buy in even a regular yeah. grocery store, mm -hmm. and a little bowl of water, very important, and a super sharp knife. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me about this knife. I mean, this if you can hold that knife up and just kind of show people. Now this knife, when you got it originally, you were telling me it was almost twice the width, right? Yeah, it was about, yeah, it was probably about that big. Right, and just over the years from sharpening it and sharpening it, it's mm -hmm. gotten down to, to about half that size. And it's very fragile, right? You say if you drop it, it'll shatter? Well, this one's actually made out of stainless, but the other ones I have, um, I really use them actually nowadays, is they'll rust, and then they'll also, like, if you break it, it'll actually, yeah, it'll break in half. Wow. And then those costs... A lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> so yeah. just people out there, get the sharpest hmm. knife you can is, yeah. would be your yeah. advice. With right? those kind of knives, I would not cut like a shrimp tempura roll with it. You know, <laughs> it's going to crack. It will crack everything. Wow, that's yeah. funny. Um, another question, Scott, before we hmm. watch me make a fool of myself. Yeah, K-Jack <laughs> wants to know how often do they get their fish at the restaurant, and is it true that you should never buy fish on Mondays? No, that's not true. <laughs> that is not true. Yeah, we actually get our, uh, because our business, uh, our restaurant is actually really busy, um, we actually buy it on a daily basis. Okay. So basically, if it runs out, it runs out. It's gone. It's 86. You know? And if we still have it, good. You can still eat. And now, <laughs> another, myth, yeah. another myth out there right now is a lot of people worried about eating sushi mm -hmm. because um, Japanese nuclear problems. Mm -hmm. But the, the fish that you're getting come out of, from a totally different se section of Japan. Yeah, right? for the most part, what we get our fish from, like I usually hand select depending on different provinces in Japan and stuff like that. For the most part, which is weird is because I actually uh, started choosing most of my stuff down south, like way down south, right. like in the Kyushu area. So because of that, like the radiation has to hit that area. And because how like um, 
the the wind circulation, how it's how it is out there. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't actually push down. So for the most part, what they're saying is that it hasn't been affected at all. They haven't found any kind of problem with fish. Okay, so let's do what we came here to do. I'm going to try to do it quickly, but well. Mm -hmm. We start with our nori, which has a yeah. shiny side, and it has a not so shiny side. And um, which one do we put up and which one do we put down? Okay, this time, last time you actually made the rice on the outside, we're actually going to have the seaweed on the outside, the traditional type. Okay. So the shiny side would go down. Go down yeah, when go we're down. doing a traditional roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got our shiny side down, yeah. then we uh, then take the rice. There's actually a jagged side on, I don't know if you can see it, but there, there you go. There's like a, a jagged side on this side, and then there's like a really straight cut on the bottom. You want the jagged side to be facing towards you. Yep, I got that. Ready? I made have been my mistake last time. Maybe I didn't <laughs> check it. Okay, so ex show people how we now apply the rice. Okay, usually like um, well, speed would be an issue because like the rice gets sticky the longer you hold it. So uh, basically, what would you do is um, just put your hands in the water, just rub it around a little bit. You'll grab maybe like a, a small like half of a fistful of rice. Yeah, and you would actually kind of like stretch it aside. Now you don't want to smash it. You just want to kind of drag it across. Okay. And from here, you're just basically matting it out. Like, and I'm going to be doing this as you do it, because <laughs> I don't want that much attention on me. Okay. Okay. So I get it in one hand, right? Is this enough rice? A little. Bit. A little bit more. Okay. There you go. Now then I smush it across, now, if right? If you start feeling it to get sticky, just put it down and just add a little bit more water. Okay. Or else it's going to get all over your hands. Oh, yeah, I'm doing a great job compared to what you did there. <laughs> and it gets messy, and do I have enough rice or do I need more on there? Oh, you're fine. Okay. That's why I say speed is so an then issue. I, right, yeah. speed is an issue and I am slow. Okay, here's more rice. There you go. Water. You might <laughs> a little more water. More water. So it doesn't stick. Mm. This is all the fun you can look forward to at home, people. Mm. People can laugh at you. <laughs> nice. Okay, there it is. Nice and smooth. I got a nice, happy little thing of rice there. Maybe a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. <laughs> little you more. told me that was enough. <laughs> uh, but the beauty of this is it doesn't matter how it looks. You can laugh at it. It's still going to taste good. So, Okay, so look. The more I'm, your practice is going to get a lot better. Right. So. so now we just take a little bit of fish mm -hmm. and put it inside there? Yeah. Uh, you can either have tuna, salmon. Well, we got some tuna already pre-cut. Mm -hmm. You want to show, is there a sp mm. specific way you have to cut the fish or just? Um, when you're doing sushi, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> now, when you're doing sushi, actually there's, um, I don't know if you can actually see this on camera. Um, there's actually grains going through the, the fish. And then what you want to do is actually, you want to kind of make it like an X. Like an X, so basically you're cutting against the grain. Okay. Yeah. Like that. Okay, so that's the cut. Yeah. So now I've got a couple pieces in here, and you can put a couple pieces in yours yeah. and show them how it's done. I add a little bit of um, Japanese cucumber because that's tasty, yeah. a little bit of daikon. Mm. Okay, and I'm not going to go. You don't want to overstuff it. Okay, uh, yeah. too much in there? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So now, here's the key, people. Here now is when we have to roll this thing. <laughs> and you show them first how it's okay. done, and then we will watch me do it wrong. <laughs> well, basically, what you want to do is you just want to like, uh, grab the end of the mat, just kind of make sure everything's tucked in, and then just fold it inside like that. Fold it under there. Okay. So basically, you'll see like a, a little bit of the seaweed right there, and you're basically tucking it in. From here, you want to lift up and just kind of roll it across. He makes it look easy. Yeah. <laughs> and from here, you're just basically, whatever the bamboo mat looks like is what uh, your roll is going to look like. So you just want to kind of push down. Yeah. OK, and that looks wonderful. Now we're going to watch me do it. Scott, we, can we get a camera on me? Watch how I mess this up? OK. So we roll, 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 tuck that under, right? Yeah, just leave it up a little bit. Leave it up a little bit. We tuck there. Uh -huh. Push, kind of squeeze, 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 and now I just keep rolling, right? Yeah, and then just flip it up. Just there you go. flip it up and roll. There you go. And now I want to make it look pretty, so we <laughs> press, press it down. And um, okay, that didn't look so bad. 
There you go. Almost. Looks almost. <laughs> almost. Yeah. You know what? If, if these people at home make it look that good, they're going to be happy. They're not going to be waiting for you to tell them that what they did wrong. So now, the slicing it. How do we slice it? Oh, well, I mean, wait. Okay, from, what did I do wrong? From here, all you have to do is just mold it. Okay. So basically, you just, just kind of, like I said, whatever the rice mat looks like mm -hmm. is what your roll is going to look like. So if you just do that, it's going to look exactly like that. Oh, okay. That's all I had to do was just do that. Okay, now, let's cut, cut it up. How many pieces do you cut a roll like that? Oh, this one will normally be six pieces. Okay. All right. I got enough this water. Make sure you want to have water on your knife. Mm -hmm. What you usually do is you would just actually get some water like this and then let the, the water just run down your knife. Mm. All right. Okay. And once it runs down, you just want to go in the middle. I'm going to slice the top a little bit, come down, and that's it. The same thing. Just keep on doing it over. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Just come down like that. So basically, you just want to do it in like three strokes. All right. Yeah. Through, down, through. Okay. Let me give it a quick try. And okay. So the middle. Move the right side of the way. And so I go down. No, you push forward first. Uh, forward. Well, I did it wrong. There you okay. go. I still got it. So, okay, forward first. Forward, back, down. There you go. Yeah. No, I did that in two strokes. See, it looks a lot nicer, right, than the last Yeah, time. it looks a lot nicer, <laughs> man. This, this looks good. Scott, get in on these things. These bad boys don't look bad at all. That, well, that one's a little outside, but those other five look pretty good. Yeah, I'll turn them, turn them towards you, man. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine look okay. Okay, I'm going to eat one now. We're going to have a little bit of um, sake. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yuki, I appreciate it. We're going to be back and talk about Restaurant Week in one second. We're going to go to a break. See you guys in a few minutes. All right.